The Tennessee Titans must keep DeAndre Hopkins. We're diving into salary cap specifics on today's edition of the Locked On Titans podcast. Let's get it. You are Locked On Titans, your daily Tennessee Titans podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to the Locked On Titans podcast. I am your host, Tyler Rowland, Titans fans. Today's edition of the Locked On Titans podcast is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 if your bet wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get started. It's day three of off-season roadmap week. We looked at the coaching staff. We looked at cut candidates. Now we need to talk about the money. I'll tell you why the Titans need to keep DeAndre Hopkins, which players they should cut, and how much salary cap space will the Titans actually have tomorrow. We're going to do a mock free agency based on the salary cap money that we end up with here today. And Friday, a full seven-round mock draft. It is my perfect off-season for the Titans this week. If you missed any of the other two episodes, check those out. Make sure you don't miss any of the two episodes that are coming up after today. Again, Monday through Friday, Tennessee Titans content all year round, always for free here on the Locked on Titans podcast. You're not going to beat that anywhere else. Make sure you get subscribed, stay subscribed to the number one Tennessee Titans podcast in the world. Throw a thumbs up on the video as well. Show's always free. All I ask for in return is the press of a button. But again, my main point here is the Titans must keep DeAndre Hopkins. Now, I'm going to talk about players that the Titans should be cutting afterwards, but there are two players that I want to focus on who some people have talked about. Will they be back? Should they be cut? This and that. And number one is DeAndre Hopkins. And look, there is some confusion here in regards to DeAndre Hopkins' situation. I love when the uninformed fans start barking at me, he's under contract, he's... You guys don't understand how the contract was set up. So I'm going to throw the DeAndre Hopkins contract specifics up, up on the screen. When DeAndre Hopkins came to the Tennessee Titans last year, he got a two-year, $26 million deal with the understanding... That if DeAndre Hopkins wanted to leave next year, he would be allowed to do so. If DeAndre Hopkins goes to the Titans organization and says, I want to go chase a Super Bowl, I don't want to be here, they are going to let DeAndre Hopkins go. People keep saying, well, what if they don't want to? That is not how you do business with a respected veteran like DeAndre Hopkins. It's just a, it's a business understanding here that if Hopkins wants to go, he can. But the Titans need to do everything in their power to keep DeAndre Hopkins around. I mean, last year, he broke the curse. 75 catches, 1,057 yards, seven touchdowns. Look, is DeAndre Hopkins a top-tier number one wide receiver in the NFL right now? No, he isn't. But he is a very good number two wide receiver. Very, very good top-tier number two wide receiver. And if the Titans can get a better number one receiver, like one of the free agent options, and get a wide receiver early in the draft, they would be absolutely cooking, and the wide receiver group would be changed overnight. And DeAndre Hopkins needs to be a part of that. Now, again, I'm throwing the contract up for Hopkins. He had a $4 million cap hit last year. Despite Again, you would look at the contract and say, oh, $13 million a year. But he only was $4 million on the cap last year. And they structured the contract in that way to help the Tennessee Titans fit him in. And in return for that assistance, again, they gave him the option that he can leave after the season. Now, if he does leave, he will be $7 million in dead cap. So the way that you can look at that is it was one year, $17 million for his services last year, which would be a fair rate. But the Titans would still save 
$10 million on the salary cap if Hopkins does decide to go elsewhere and he decides to leave. The Titans would be able to cut him, and again, that saves them $10 million. But I don't care about that $10 million because DeAndre Hopkins is worth the money. All right, look around at what other number two wide receivers are making in the NFL. If the Titans had a $17 million cap hit for DeAndre Hopkins this year with the cap space that they have, it would be absolutely worth it. Again, he needs more help. Get DeAndre Hopkins more help. There is a reality here that DeAndre Hopkins struggled to create separation last year. DeAndre Hopkins struggled even more with press coverage. All right. He's getting into his 30s. He's not going to be the physical specimen that he was during his prime. But then again, DeAndre Hopkins never survived and lived off of creating separation. He's a guy who's going to win in contested catch situations, and he was still able to do that. And you saw my Will Levis film breakdown. If not, check out the link at Tic Tac Titans in the description, my new film channel here on YouTube. But DeAndre Hopkins can still win the way that he's been winning forever, even if it's at a bit of a reduced rate because he's getting older. At the end of the day, the point is he is still worth the $17 million cap hit that he represents on the Titans cap this year. And I think if they can keep him around and they can convince him to stay, they need to do everything they can to do that because keeping DeAndre Hopkins with Will Levis, a Paris, a Paris, a pair that we clearly saw have chemistry would be critical for the Titans' success moving into next year. So you don't want to get rid of DeAndre Hopkins, and you don't want him to want to leave. You want him to want to stay. You want to bring him back, and you want to build on what you have there, not lose ground and then try to build it back up. So again, I understand it's a complicated situation. People are like, oh, he's under contract. What do you mean they got to keep him? Blah, blah, blah. And I'm trying to explain to you how the situation is a little bit more nuanced and a little bit more detailed than maybe your average casual fan who's just seeing the contract numbers and working through it thinks. So I hope we all have an understanding now that DeAndre Hopkins can choose to go if he wants, and the Titans need to do everything they can to make him want to stay. All right, if that includes restructuring the deal, adding some more bonus money in while lowering the cap hit, the Titans absolutely need to consider doing that, okay? But just on its own, the Titans need to find a way to keep Hopkins around. The next person I wanted to talk about was Amani Hooker. I talked about it last week when there were people online saying that Amani Hooker, if you cut him, it only gonna say it's only gonna save you four point three million dollars. You still have five million dollars in dead cap for a quality player like Amani Hooker, who is a starting level player in the NFL. With how much cap space the Titans have right now, it does not make any sense whatsoever to cut Amani Hooker. So Hopkins. And Hooker, they need to stay around. They are not moves the Titans need to make to save money. Those are two quality starters who the Titans need to keep around with all the cap space that they have and build on what they have, not cut more into their good players that they actually have on the roster, okay? But who should they cut? I got a long list of names for you. And and the Titans will be able to clear out around $10 million of additional cap space with the cuts that I have planned out here. So we're going to dive into that in just a moment. Before we do, though, I do want to let you guys know that today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. It's time to get buckets with your first bet on FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Because right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's 150 bucks if your bet wins. You could do quick bets, live same game parlays. They have exclusive prop deals. Of course, you have spreads, money line, over under. The NBA season is ramping up. We know that the NBA season really takes off after the All-Star break. So even though the NFL season is over, it's still a great time to visit FanDuel.com slash locked on. Again, that's FanDuel.com. Dot com slash locked on and shoot your shot. FanDuel, official sportsbook partner of the NBA. Titans fans. 
fans, let's continue day three of all-season roadmap week. We're diving into the financials here. We just talked about two players who the Titans shouldn't cut, even though it could save them a little bit of money. And as a matter of fact, they need to do everything they can to convince DeAndre Hopkins to stay. But now I want to get into some players the Titans do need to cut. And we'll talk about how much cap space they have right now as we dive into it. Before we get there, do want to thank you guys again for making the Locked On Titans podcast your first listen each and every day. Remember, tomorrow is a mock free agency with the money that we have from today. Then Friday, a full seven-round mock draft. Talk about how this Titans offseason should go. We already graded the coaching staff. We also talked about in-house free agents who the Titans should let walk or let go. I know a lot of you guys were not happy about my uh, take on Derrick Henry there, but that's perfectly fine. We're not always going to agree on everything, and that's all right. But right now, if you go to SpotTrack.com, the Titans have $72 million in cap space. You go on to Over the Cap, the Titans have about $68 million of cap space. So there's a little bit of variance there in the estimations. Both those websites are widely respected and widely used. They're usually off by a couple of million dollars a piece from each other, just how they see things. So for our purposes today, let's go ahead and call it $70 million in cap space. We'll just go ahead and split the two websites down the middle and get an accurate portrayal here of where the Titans are at. So about $70 million in cap space. The number one name that I am going to bring up to cut, and you guys let me know down below who you think should be cut, and be within reason. Some of you guys are like, cut Traylon Burks. Uh, they need to, like, go look at one of these financial websites before you say things like that. Like last year, everybody told me the Titans should cut Caleb Barley, even though it literally would lose them $5 million in cap space. Why would they do that? It, it doesn't make any sense. So have some reason in the things that you're saying here. But number one for me is Andre Dillard. And when you look at Andre Dillard's contract situation, all right, he's set to be $10 million on the salary cap. You cannot pay that. You simply cannot pay that. It's just unattainable. So you cut Andre Dillard, and as you can see, if you're looking, and if not, I'll explain it, he has a dead cap of $7.7 million. So $10.6 million cap hit, $7.7 million dead cap. You got to cut Andre Dillard. If you do it in the normal time in February, you're going to save yourself about $2.8 million. What the Titans should do here, because the Titans, it's not like last year where the Titans were uh, scraping and clawing and trying to look for coins in the couch because they had no money. The Titans have about $70 million in cap space right now, so they don't really need to do too much to expand upon that. There are easier things that they can do, which we're going to go over to do that. But with Andre Dillard, you need to maximize your savings. So what the Titans should do is designate him as a post-June 1st release, all right? And as you can see on the screen, if you don't hear, if you cut a player with a post-June 1 release date, that changes the financial equation. The Titans did this with Julio Jones a couple of years ago. So look, if the Titans cut Andre Dillard before June the 1st, like in February, like when normal cuts happen, they're only going to save that $2.8 million, okay? Okay. But if they designate him as a post-June 1st cut, which you still release him in February, early March, but the the cut doesn't actually happen officially until after June 1st, well, now the Titans will get $6.4 million in savings, and the $7 million in dead cap that they'll have to pay for cutting him will be split up between 2024 and 2025. Now, why would you do this? Because you still need money after Free agency, you still need money after you sign the draft class. The Tennessee Titans have $9 million in rollover cap space from 2023 that they're rolling over into 2024. You need money during the season to sign players. You have injuries. You claim a guy off waivers. You want to make a trade. You need money. Think about the money that the Titans spent on Hopkins. Think about the money that the Titans spent on Chris Hubbard last year. It's not like after you're done with free agency in the draft that you don't need any of your money and your cap space can be at zero. So what you do is you cut Andre Dillard with a post-June 1st designation. You save $6 million. You don't get that money until after June the 1st, but you can use all of your money right now knowing that you're going to get that $6 million after June the 1st. So it would be like this. 
Say you have $10, all right? You have $10 for lunch this week. But you know that one of your buddies is giving you $5 on Thursday. Well, if you didn't know about that, you might spend $2, $2, $2. But on Wednesday, you're like, hey, I know I'm getting $5 tomorrow, so I'm going to get a better lunch right now. Um, Think about that with free agency. Yeah, I may not have that $6 million until June, but I know it's coming, so I'm going to be able to use more money right now knowing that I get that payment on the back end. So Andre Dillard must be cut, not only because of the money, but you just can't have a player like Andre Dillard on the team next year. He's not a good enough player. He shouldn't play over NPF, Dylan Radens, Jalen Duncan, rookies who get brought in, free agent offensive linemen who get brought in. Andre Dillard is just not that guy, all right? The Titans gave him a shot. They did a lottery ticket on him, but it's time to let him go. So save your $6 million. Do it as a post-June 1st cut. All right? That's what they need to do there. But moving forward, I think the Titans need to cut Daniel Brunskill. So Daniel Brunskill was a consistent guy when he was on the field last year for the Titans. No doubt about that. But he got hurt at the end of the season. His play started to drop off. The Titans were literally putting Calvin Throckmorton in over Daniel Brunskill because Brunskill wasn't healthy enough to continue and wasn't playing very well at the end of the season. Here's the reality. You have Dylan Radens, who's $2 million. Nicholas Petit Ferrer, who's $1.4 million. Potentially a rookie that you're going to draft and bring in who's going to be cheaper than a million dollars. NPF and Dylan Radens. Salary combined is the same as Daniel Brunskill's $3.3 million. And he's only got $500,000 in dead cap. So the Titans can save nearly $3 million in cap space just by cutting Daniel Brunskill when I think that Dylan Radens and Nicholas petit Ferrer under Bill Callahan could be just as good as a 30-year-old Daniel Brunskill who isn't going to be able to stay healthy throughout the season. So to me... It's not that Daniel Brunskill is a bad player. He's fine, but he's just a replacement level player in the NFL. You can find other players like him. And in my opinion, the Titans have two players on the roster right now who could be just as good as Daniel Brunskill at right guard for significantly less. Again, Dylan Raidens and NPF together cost the same as Daniel Brunskill. So cut Daniel Brunskill, save your $3 million, and add that to your cap space immediately. You don't got to wait until June like we talked about with Andre Dillard. So that's what I want the Titans to do there. Cut Daniel Brunskill. Then we get into three guys from the same draft class. Elijah Molden, Rashad Weaver, and Hassan Haskins. To me, Haskins is an easy cut. Hassan Haskins is a special teams player only. He is not a running back. He does not have wiggle. He does not have speed. He does not have burst. Hassan Haskins is not a running back. Period. He's a special teams only player. His salary is $1.2 million. And his dead cap is only 100 k Save a million dollars by cutting a son Haskins who you didn't even have last year anyways. That's a stone cold easy cut right there. Save your million dollars there. Elijah Molden, this was a tough one for me. But Molden is $1.5 million against the cap. If you cut him, you could save $1.3 million. I'm sorry, but Elijah Molden got passed up on the depth chart last year by backup safeties. He just hasn't shown enough to justify a $1.5 million price tag. I would rather bring in a day three pick in the secondary in the draft and let him take that spot. So if you cut Molden, you cut Haskins. Now you've saved $1.5 million and added that to your cap space. And then the final guy is Rashad Weaver. Weaver is $1.2 million on the salary cap. You would save a million dollars by doing that. But Weaver had five and a half sacks in 2022. He was underused in 2023. I would like to see Weaver get another shot in the final year of his contract to see if he could be disruptive and help the Titans pass rush. And you need a major heavy rotation in the defensive line. And I think Weaver has shown enough skill in the pass rush that he can help the Titans in that rotation. So I'm keeping Rashad Weaver. I'm cutting Elijah Moulton. I'm cutting Hassan Haskins. And I'm saving the Titans about one uh, $2.4 million on the cap. Then you get to Caleb Farley. Look, no matter what, no matter when you do it, if you cut Caleb Farley, it's $4.2 million in dead cap. 
It's not going to save you anything. You don't save any money at all. So look, I'm bringing Caleb Farley into training camp, seeing if he's rebounded, seeing if he's healthy. If he's not, then you cut him during training camp. But there's just no reason to cut Caleb Farley right now. Finally, though, Malik Willis. You got to cut Malik Willis. Again, I've talked about potentially trading Malik Willis. If someone will give you a conditional seventh rounder in 2026, if he makes the roster, then sure. But Malik Willis is only $466,000 in dead cap. He's $1 million on the salary. So I just say you cut him, or he's a $1 million saving if you cut him, about $1.4 million on the cap. Just cut bait, man. Just save your million dollars. Again, you need a veteran backup quarterback with Will Levis, not two young developing quarterbacks. So don't draft a quarterback. Don't keep Malik Willis. Go ahead and cut him. Let him see if he can find an opportunity elsewhere and bring in a veteran backup quarterback. All right, so if the Titans do what I say here and they cut Daniel Brunskill for $3 million, they cut Molden and Haskins and get an extra 2.5. That's 5.5 million. They cut Malik Willis. That's another million. 6.5 million. And then Luke Gifford, Quentin Bohanna, and Garrett Will- uh, Wallow all get cut. That's another 4 million with those end of the depth chart guys. You add that 4 million to the five, six and a half million, you're looking at $10.5 million. And that's without saving 6.4 million on Andre Dillard. So 3 million from Brunskill. Two and a half million from Molden and Haskins. That's five and a half. One million from Malik Willis. That's six and a half. And then four million from Gifford, Bohanna, and Wallow. That's ten and a half million dollars with an extra six and a half coming after June the first. You add that to the seventy million in cap space the Titans already have, and now the Titans have eighty million dollars in cap space to go work with and reshape this roster. To me, those are all clear cut, obvious moves to make. And hopefully the Titans do it. So tomorrow, when we do a mock free agency, we're going to be doing it with $80 million of cap space based on the cuts that we have made here. But what I want to do is talk about why that cap space isn't what it seems. Some of the easy kind of thoughts that come along with discussing financials in the NFL and contracts. And the Titans made some additions to their coaching staff. So I'm going to talk about all that. Before I do, though, Do want to let you guys know that today's episode is brought to you by eBay Motors. All right, listen. eBay Motors has it all. And you combine that with passion, drive, and patience. eBay Motors knows that that's, what's br- that's what brings home the winning trophy. And it's also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance from superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions apply. eBay Guaranteed Fit, only available to U.S. customers. Titans fans, let's cap off today's edition of the Locked on Titans podcast. It is day three of our offseason roadmap week. Getting a little little into the weeds on today's show with some of the financial aspects of the Titans offseason. On day one, we graded the coaching staff. On day two, we talked about in-house free agents that the Titans should keep or let go. Today, we talked about keeping DeAndre Hopkins and Imani Hooker, cutting some guys, including Andre Dillard, Daniel Brunskill, create more salary cap space, and we ended up with $80 million in cap room to play with on tomorrow's show where we do a mock free agency, and then we'll finish off the week with a seven-round mock draft for the Titans on Friday. Thank you all for tuning in. Shout out to my everydayers out there. Remember, Monday through Friday, Tennessee Titans content all year round. 
always for free. You're not going to beat that anywhere else. So make sure you get subscribed, stay subscribed. It's your team every day. But I wanted to make a few points about contracts and how they work. So most people, when they see a contract, like we talked about with DeAndre Hopkins, you see two years, $26 million. Well, it's a two-year, $26 million deal. But there is outs in the contract. The guaranteed money is what matters most. So if the Titans sign somebody and it says four years, $90 million, just know that is not literally what the contract is. That is not what the Titans are locked into. That's just not how it works, okay? Teams like DeAndre Hopkins got a two-year, $26 million deal from the Titans, but his cap hit was only $4 million last year. You see what I mean? What what teams do is they use void years. And if you're looking at the screen right now, you see everything in orange. Everything in orange is void years. Like the Titans are still paying $9 million for Ryan Tannehill this year. They're still paying $4 million for Derrick Henry, no matter what happens. That's a sunk cost. Because what the Titans do is they add void years to a contract and it helps you spread out the bonus money, which helps you keep the cap hit low. So teams do all these financial uh, loopholes to, to try to lower the cap hit so they can get as many good players on their team as possible while, you know, basically fudging how the salary cap space works. Now, the thing is, is people always say, oh, the salary cap is fake. Well, that's not true because eventually the bill will come due. If you restructure people's contracts or you add void years to the end of contracts, you're going to have to pay the piper eventually, okay? Like I just said, the Titans are paying $9 million for Ryan Tannehill in 2024. The Titans are paying $4 million for Derrick Henry in 2024, whether they're on the team or not. And even if the Titans brought back Derrick Henry, they would still have to pay that dead $4.3 million. Eventually, the tab comes due. Now, you can restructure contracts and take salary money and turn it into bonus money and spread the bonus money out over the years of the contract to lower that cap pit. You can do all those games, but eventually it comes due. So it's like when there was a Nashville radio show host who said, you can only get two players with $100 million. One player is $95 million on their own. That's not how it works. Okay, that's simply not how it works. All right, so just keep that in mind as you talk about free agent contracts that what the the AAV, the average annual value, if it's a four-year deal for $20 million, he's not going to be $5 million on the cap, okay? It's not that simple. It's not that easy, and teams will do a lot of different things to try to mess with that to make it work better for them financially, but that doesn't mean that the salary cap is fake. The, the bill will come due eventually. And that's why for the Titans, with the cap space that they have this year, it is smart for them to not do anything like that. Don't restructure Harold Landry's contract. Don't restructure different deals and push the money into the future. You have money this year and next year. So don't do you don't need to do that with some of these contracts. So just keep that stuff in mind. Always look at the guaranteed money. Always check for void years in a contract. Don't just take the four years, 80 million. He's making 20 mil a year. That's just simply not how it works. Okay. So when you're thinking about how the Titans can use their money in free agency, just don't think about it in those simple terms. It's much more complicated than that. The last few things that I want to talk about here, the Titans came out and confirmed some of the additions on the coaching staff. We have a defensive line coach. It's Tracy Rocker. He came over from Philadelphia. Philly's had one of the best D-lines in the NFL for the last few years. So that's a great get for the Titans. Tracy Rocker's coached with the Titans before. So love that fit. Ben Bloom came over from Cleveland. He's going to be the outside linebacker coach. Tom Jones. I told you guys about Tom Jones last week. I told you about Tom Jones. 25 years. Uh, with the Raiders organization, knows the Callahan family well. He's going to be the assistant to the head coach. Always makes me think of uh, the office, where you're not you're not the assistant regional manager. The, you're the assistant to the regional manager. So he's the Tom Jones is the assistant to the head coach, not the assistant head coach. Big difference there. Um, Lori Locust, 
the outside linebacker coach. She's going to be back as an assistant. Uh, Anthony Levine, who I've been preaching about with special teams. The Titans have not hired a special teams coach yet. Should happen soon. But Anthony Levine will be back as a special teams assistant. Love that. And then finally, Frank Pirano, who was the Titans' director of sports development, I guess is the term for it, but thanks strength and conditioning, gone, fired. We did it, Titans fans. We're going to get a different person in charge of sports performance. Oh my God, what a great day that it is. But with that being said, tomorrow, mock free agency. You guys aren't going to want to miss that one. I know it for sure with 80 million to play with, but that is going to do it for me today, folks. As always, I am your host, Tyler Rowland. And this was Locked on Titans.